All right, uh, Ainsley, the big three networks spending absolutely no time covering Hillary Clinton's leaked emails last night. So why is she seen to be getting a continuing free pass? Joining us right now, media and political analyst uh, Steve Adubato. He has got a brand new book out. It's called Lessons in Leadership. Steve, we'll get to that shortly. Mm. But first things first, am, do you, are you concerned about the lack of balance generally? Yes, I am concerned about it. Um, there is a sense that Hillary Clinton, who has been very smart about this, she, she has not been out there a lot. Trump is out there every day, several times a day, and he makes news. He says things, Brian, let's not kid ourselves, that are controversial, that are very newsworthy, and she does not. She does not answer direct questions. She has not held the press conference. She did not answer Chris's, Chris Wallace's direct question about the conflicts of the Clinton Foundation. She's smart in that way. The media's job is to press those issues. They haven't. They haven't pressed the WikiLeaks issues. They'll say it's very complicated. They'll say it's a question about what the sources are. But wh what, what about the sources as to how information gets leaked to the New York Times? The question is, where is the balance here? But Trump, a lot of this he brings on himself because he says things that are so outrageous. It's a balancing act. The media hasn't done its job. Trump hasn't helped himself. Does it bother you that 9 to 11 women come forward? They all could be telling the truth or they all could be lying, but none of them are vetted. They get into the New York Times. They lead other networks. Does that seem like something the uh, media should be doing, uh, the leverage they should be having? I don't have a problem with the fact that it was covered. The degree to which it was covered is problematic. Again, though, I have to tell you, Trump exacerbated the situation by attacking those women, by saying he's going to sue them, by continuing to talk about it. He could have lessen that story by not continuing to talk about it. But I do have a problem with the degree to which the media covered that. Uh, in the big picture, Obamacare is very truly ver verified by the president himself, seems to be imploding before our eyes. That, to me, could be a lead story anywhere because health care resonates with every family. Kitchen table topic. The man responsible, his replacement, is going to continue on that same program. To me, if I'm looking at this in a vacuum, that's my lead. I don't think it's anybody's lead. You know what's so interesting here? The question as to what premiums are going to be, particularly after we saw the soundbite before with Nancy uh, Pelosi saying, affordability, affordability, here's the thing. I do believe that Obamacare has some valuable benefits, that some people were covered who weren't going to be covered before. There are a lot of the pre-existing conditions. All those things are positive. But you have to look at the totality of it. And the affordability is a problem. The fact that there aren't going to be enough people. People have left their states. There are only, a lot of states only have one insurer. You've got to look at that. I don't believe the media has done a good enough job looking at that. And by the way, Trump has to continue to hit that. But he's not disciplined. Don't kid yourself, Brian. You know this. He doesn't stay on the issue. He jumps onto other things. And the media takes advantage of that. He's got two ways to make an adjustment. Because I think in the battleground states, he may be trailing. But he's still within shadow. He's got to stay focused. Meanwhile, uh, this is a, a observation in picking the best candidate who is the best leader. Your book is out, Lessons in Leadership. Yeah. You talk about taking responsibility when you make mistakes, not being perfect, but acknowledging it. Tell me about that. I'm a big believer that people say, what's leadership about? It's about a lot of different things, but ultimately the number one trait, take responsibility when things go wrong. When things go wrong, when Hillary Clinton with the email situation, I have to tell you, she'll say, I have acknowledged mistakes. The reality is, what mistakes? Specifically, when? She never will do that. I will also say she is not, in my view, on the Benghazi situation, when she ultimately said, what difference does it make? It did make a difference what exactly happened and how it happened when four Americans died. As for Trump, he is the master, in my view, of not taking responsibility. He should have taken responsibility for being insensitive to the cons. He should have taken responsibility for saying what he did about John McCain. So in many ways, while they're ideologically very different, personality-wise very different, the one thing they share in common is that they don't apologize very easily. Trump thinks it's a trait. Hillary Clinton will hide. Best president as a leader, take responsibility when things go wrong, commit to fixing it. I have to tell you, that's one thing that they have not stepped up to do. All uh, right, Steve, uh, congratulations on the book. And by the way, I got mine for free and signed. I know you're jealous, but you're going to have to pay for yours. Who said free? And, uh, <laughs> I'm like kidding. I'm like kidding. Well, I did get a coupon. No, you I, didn't. I, 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 Stop. I, 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 Don't cheapen the product. No, I, you're right. Steve, good job, man. Thanks <laughs> so Thank much. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay.